Nancy Post, thank you so much for joining us oh, on the Valder BB Show. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we're live in Dallas, Texas, and I'd like to let my audience know that today I have the opportunity to speak with Lizzie Post. She's an etiquette expert, she's an author, but she's also the great-granddaughter of the famous Emily Post, and she's going to give us some tips on do's and don'ts for attending that summer wedding that I know you all have invitations to. <laughs> Lizzie, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, you know, summer is beautiful, especially in Texas. We have great weather, you know, a lot of outdoor weddings. Tell us some do's and don'ts so we can be the perfect guest. Well, the number one do for a wedding is to respond to the invitation. It is the most difficult thing for the host of a wedding to have to deal with all of the preparation for this massive event, as well as call you up to find out if you are coming and whether you would like the chicken or the fish. So it's really important that number one, you respond to the invitation. Number two is the next most important thing is the wedding gift. Even if you cannot attend a wedding, it's really important to still send a gift. It's the only invitation that carries that obligation. And this is where a lot of people can get nervous because you could be invited to something like 10 weddings in a season and your budget could really feel crunched. It's one of the reasons I've partnered with Bank of America because their Bank of America card offers 1% cash back on all of your purchases, 2% on groceries and 3% on gas. So as you're looking at purchasing dresses or tuxedos or you know a pair of new shoes and a gift and a shower gift you know and having to drive to the wedding you can at least be earning something back and it can really help you focus on enjoying the event and not on how depleted your wallet has become that was a great idea what about if you get an invitation to a shower and they cancel the shower and that happened to me recently oh did it well you, you can definitely it. still send send the gift um, especially if you've already purchased it but usually as a shower that gets canceled there's usually a, sort of a rain date haha for it and so I'm surprised have you did you receive anything like that no, they told me they would reschedule in the future, but they didn't give us a day. So I'm kind of at a quandary. You so know, you're still like, waiting to find so out. Yeah. They're still getting married, though. Okay, well, that that's good. I'm glad that the couple's still getting married and best wishes to them. However, I would say just, just hold on to it. And if you haven't heard anything in a month or so, you might want to follow up with the host and just say, you know, I'd love to, to send the gift now or, you know, just checking up to find out if the if the shower is still being rescheduled. That sounds good. Now, as we get into, uh, add a little social media to that because that plays a factor in everything that we right. do. Um, it's really important for two different thoughts on social media when it comes to the subject of weddings. The first is, as the bride and groom, don't overshare. Remember that you probably haven't invited everyone who's a Facebook friend or follows your Twitter feed to your wedding, and therefore posting every little detail about your wedding could start to feel like, oh, wow, what a great party that I'm not going to. Some people have a great attitude, and they look at it as, wow, I get to share in this event through this way because I won't be attending it. But for others, it can just feel a little bit like, okay, you know, enough is enough already. But the other thing that I like to remind people about is that when it comes to posting photos, especially during the event, you really want to wait. You want to wait and let the bride and groom be the first to post some of those photos. Otherwise, you're kind of scooping their news. Oh, I like that. That makes yeah. sense. Because <laughs> people are tweeting from your wedding. Oh, yeah. You. I love the idea of, t of putting your cell phones away. You know, I always feel like the, whoever's um, doing the ceremony will make an announcement. You know, would you mind please turning your cell phones off and keeping them in your purse? <laughs> I know that that's something new that we're hearing now. Right. It's, it's it's a brand new world. It now, is. how do you 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 keep up with the social trends? Or and what I mean by that is sure. etiquette, just basic etiquette, and you just modify it for today's living. We do. So at the Emily Post Institute, we've really always based our etiquette on the three principles of consideration, respect, and honesty. Those things are never going to go out of style, but the way in which we use them to interact with one another, that's going to change. So we always can say that the principles stay the same, but the manners can change over time. You know, we don't bow or curtsy like we did, at least here in America, um, you know, back in the day. And nowadays, it's much more common for us to, you know, shake hands, give a kiss, but it's still a greeting. It's still a sign of warmth and companionship and respect to the other person that we're going to be enjoying our time with. So we like to say that, you know, the principles stay the same, the manners change over time, and really we just watch society to find out what's going on. You know, how are people using all these new devices and how is it affecting um, the people that we're with in person? 
Well, I've got one more question. Do some sure. social traditions fall away? Uh, I don't like to shake hands. I really, <laughs> really don't. And okay. I was looking that up, and women didn't start shaking hands to what, the, the late 1800s or something? I guess so. I don't know the exact date, but it is it is a proper greeting. It's a considerate greeting. Um, every now and again, you do come across a, a lady who has been taught that ladies don't shake hands, and therefore they don't. Um, but it's it's really, I think, more about the greeting. And I think if you're going to cause an awkward situation, Situation or make someone feel like put off because you aren't shaking their hand that it's worth considering reaching out and taking that handshake it does it makes people very uncomfortable when I said I don't shake hands I tell them I hug but I don't shake hands interesting it, it puts them at a very they're just like you know that still calmness in a room that's so awkward they sure feel very awkward <laughs> well I, I would say that um, I might want to consider shaking a few hands but I don't want to put you out of your comfort zone either <laughs> Well, you you're one of the best. Do you have a book on the way for us, or do you your your still your still book is still on the shelf? We're still, I'm sorry, your current book is still on the shelf. We're still working on the current book, the sales of the current book. We did. My cousin just put out a new book, Digital Manners, um, or Manners in a Digital World, excuse me, and that's been doing wonderfully, and it does handle all of these new technologies and and how they're affecting our lives, and that's been a lot of fun to be a part of promoting. Well, I thank you so very much for talking with us. Thank and you. And we look forward to getting more information from you, Lizzie. This was fun. Absolutely. And if your watchers or readers would like more information, they can go to emilypost.com or bankofamerica.com. Thank you so much, Lizzie. This was a great interview. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers.